This week's episode of Awesome Cast is brought to you by Drobo, the lovely people who will make sure that your data is safe at all times. Go ahead and check it out at awesomecast.com. Click on the Drobo link on the right hand side to learn more. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast. Sorg here once again. Episode 75 coming at you from Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. With me, as usual, although I think he's being shipped over the seas to Abu Dhabi, uh, Rob De La Creta, how you doing? I'm good. I'm, uh, yeah, you know, the seas are a little rough. Uh, <laughs> I forgot to bring enough uh, granola bars for the trip. Yeah, that could be a problem. That could be a problem. Uh, so I might die soon, but we'll see if I make it through the podcast. For those for those not on video, he is definitely coming to us from an actual shipping container. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's uh, we'll call it my office. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, that works. <laughs> <laughs> and on the couch, you're back with us once again. No, that's me. That's, you. that's me. That's the wrong button. Oh, There's there Chachi. I am. Chachi says that. There not, I am. He does things. I do things. He sometimes. does things. He's got the video. Sometimes. Blog. What? Sometimes I do things. I enjoyed your lemmings post the other day. I now know what a lemming lo- really looks I like. I know, right? Yeah, right. It's just a little thing. And <laughs> Didn't they, realize it was a real little animal. Yeah. And boom, there it is. But that's over at ChachiSays.net and everything Ooh. else you got going on. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently 5,000 people watched Chachi Says the Vidcast last month. Yes, we have to qualify <laughs> that. I refuse to believe Mind that. Mind is blown. I, I No. I you still refuse. No, no, I nope. still refuse. You're in disbelief? Yep. Okay. I still refuse. <laughs> All right. And our guest tonight joining us, John Chamberman, Chamberlain from uh, yajagoff.com, who I first met at PodCamp. How you doing? I'm good, thanks. I'm good. And it was great meeting everybody. PodCamp was awesome, by the way. Awesome, awesome. So tell us, what is yajagoff.com? <laughs> well, it's a, uh, you know, for those from Pittsburgh, jagoff is a term of someone we don't like very much. But uh, in our term, in, in January, we uh, started a blog. I started a blog. As a secret to literally everybody that I knew. And um, anyways, what we did is I just got tired of uh, being behind jerky drivers, jag off drivers, jag off people at the bank waiting line, jag off this, jag off that. So I decided to start taking pictures of them and posting them up on a blog called yajagoff.com. And next thing you know, I have people emailing me, Pittsburghers, Pittsburgh is at Pittsburgh expatriates, emailing me different jag offs that didn't know how to park, different jag offs that are got. <laughs> 20 to 20 items in the 12 item line at the grocery store and next thing you know we suddenly have a blog of uh with with a bunch of reads and uh it's been pretty fun um as a matter of fact in august we were named the cbs pittsburgh's most valuable blogger award people's choice so it was kind of cool it's been kind of cool nice and there's a little shot of it there uh so i mean so it's a little it's a little bit of everything pittsburghy huh yeah and, and you know it's anybody that's making we like to say we're uh, we're trying to make Pittsburgh better one jag off at a time. So we, <laughs> you know, p- people that are inconsiderate of each other, people that push each other out of the way, cut in front of you in line and traffic. You know, there's just no need for it. So we point those people out as well as you know, famous probably one of the most frequent posts right now is uh, is Roger Goodell from the NFL. So. Anytime he has something to say, usually we post him as a jag. I, I do well. notice Tom Brady, our easiest post ever. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah, I, I guess we have one. We, we, we got called a jag off a couple weeks ago, Chachi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Screw that guy. I've never been called a jag off. <laughs> we, were, we were on East Car- we were on Carson Street uh, outside of uh, Wim. Right, yeah, right across In from traffic. The, yeah. Like, we were driving, and a guy had just gotten off the bus was standing on the sidewalk waiting across the street where there wasn't a crosswalk. Mm -hmm. And we had the green light. So No, no, we pulled up right in front of him. We're waiting for the red light. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. We pulled up, blocking his easy path to illegally cross the street. 
and he <laughs> called us effing jagoffs. Yeah, yeah, and then crossed right in front <laughs> yeah. of us. Is after almost missing another lady that was walking from the other angle behind me <laughs> from the left, and I had no idea she was there. Uh, yeah, that's dangerous. There's now. no doubt that the jagoff call comes from a certain point of view. Everybody has their own point of view. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. God, uh, for- so- God forbid we drive our car in the street where it belongs. <laughs> <laughs> now I, I have. I'm, I'm dying to get a person like that because I'm usually driving when I see these things and someone who's yelling at me with their hands up or their finger up ready. I just haven't been able to snap that picture yet and have that classic you jag off picture. <laughs> gotta work on the gotta work on the reflex. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need a mobile cam in my car so I can just point and aim, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Now uh, I understand you do a bit of uh, charity work with the site as well, right? Yeah, uh, basically, like I said, I kept the site as a secret because one of the things I wanted to see how, if it would have any success, I didn't want it to be like selling life insurance where you, you know, you go find all your friends and then once you're done with your friends and your, and your relatives, you're done with customers. So I didn't tell anybody. But in the meantime, my wife is actually, uh, at 34, was uh, very courageous. Uh, she, she was found out she was positive for the BRCA1, BRCA2 gene for breast cancer and ovarian cancer, given her grandmother and aunt have it. So without getting too dismal, basically, she went ahead and had a bunch of prophylactic surgery at McGee Women's Hospital. And thanks to the genetic research that told her she was at a 90 percent chance of getting these, she decided to have all this surgery prophylactically. Pretty courageous at 34 years old. So what we decided to do was sell Don't Be a Jagoff T-shirts and put all that money, put those proceeds to uh, McGee Women's. When I finally revealed to her why I've been on the computer so much every day and every night, uh, she was happy that I wasn't searching porn and all the other stuff, but, uh, <laughs> she, so basically I said, look, I need you to decide where you want the money to go. We're selling t-shirts and put the, put it in your name. So this week actually is our first donation of a thousand dollars to the McGee women's research foundation nice. in, uh, in her name. And, uh, it's basically from the t-shirt sales. Excellent. And you, I'm showing in the video a bunch of pictures, a whole bunch of people. Here's somebody from Cincinnati, Ohio with it. <laughs> yeah. well, someone uh, even took, there's one of a kid in London there. There's a follower, an expat from Minnesota who went to London and took her Don't Be a Jag Off t-shirt for her son and there he is standing there in London. <laughs> it, it is crazy, like how many people, uh, uh, how many expatriates, how how kind of worldwide, nationwide it is. Because I know uh, when we started the wrestling show, you know, I always tell the story about we were visited by somebody from London, uh, not an expatriate, just somebody from London that was a huge Steeler fan. And, is that right? Yeah. yeah and, 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 and between that and what we see with Burger's Eye View and all the people all over the country that uh, that listen to their show and, and communicate with them, it's it's tremendous. Yeah, our virt- I think the Pittsburgh virtual population is is twice the size of New York City. I, I think a real population, right? So it definitely when you count the people that want to live here, it definitely but, feels uh, like it. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> excellent. But uh, what's just one other note there? I, I before we go off to anything else, we are doing an online auction uh, okay. on in Thanksgiving Thanksgiving week in this first week of December. I have a bunch of um, celebrities, pseudo celebrities. Uh, Signing Don't Be a Jag Off t-shirts. The Clarks, Billy Gardell has signed two. Dan Marino signing one. We've got a few Penguins signing them. We're going to put them up for an auction on the website, and all of those proceeds will go to uh, McGee Women's Research Foundation, too. So that's uh, Thanksgiving week. Excellent. Excellent. So everybody go check that off. Yeah, got to uh, save second yeah. base. Save second base? Yes. <laughs> got to save second base. I know you get you get really behind the, uh, the breast hey, cancer. We're not going to go into it here. No. But I saved second base. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it only oh. took me like 29 seconds to catch that. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, thanks for joining us, John. And uh, we're going to roll for the news. If you can roll right along with us. All right. I'll hang. Thanks. All right. Um, first, of all, let's get into the fan interactions again. Hey, if you've uh, come across this, hey, we're ever here. We're here every Tuesday night. Uh, live.sogatronmedia.com except for when we're not except for when we're not which isn't too often yeah. uh, you can also follow us on twitter at awesomecast awesomecast at I'm sorry contact at 
awesomecast.com or drop us a line at 724-258-CAST at 724-252-2278. Uh, you can find us on iTunes, MediaFly, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube, Stitcher, Mevio, and I'm sure a bunch of other places we might have filtered through to by now. Um, so uh, let's get right into some of the fan interactions. I don't think we covered this last week. One from Mad Mike of the Mayhem Show. I think he's popped up on here once or twice before. Um, did you know that they used the iPhone 4 to shoot a portion of the... Uh, Avengers yeah. trailer? Yeah. I did. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about this. Because uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be from the point of view of a bystander. Okay. Mm. Not so, like that part of the that part of the trailer. I mean, I, granted, it's supposed to be like just it's just a little clip or something. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's in there. So yeah. so it became news. Right. But that makes sense. You know, I mean, we've seen um, I've seen some stuff, where, you know, some TV shows where you see a guy with a flip cam and then you see like it's not widescreen, and, you know, back when they weren't widescreen and everything like that. Yeah, I, I think it's only a couple seconds, and I think it's supposed to be from the point of view from, like, someone walking down the street who happens to see something happening. Mm -hmm. So they break out their iPhone, because that's where we're at as a society, mm -hmm. <laughs> where we see something happening, so we want to capture it. You even see that in the comic books, too. Like, yeah. I, I, some of the, like, the newer Spider-Man stuff, like, uh, like I think it's the Ultimate stuff I was, <coughs> I was uh, reading, and there's, like, you know, Spider-Man gets on the internet fighting Doc Ock, you know? <laughs> Or, uh, yeah, well, even like in Superman, like, uh, like Lowell Slane's a, a TV reporter now because it's the newspaper isn't relevant. Um, but, uh, but no, that's really cool that they're using that. I mean, we, we've heard about people making like small films and everything before with iPhones, and you know, interesting to see them using it for a feature film that's probably going to make a buttload of money next year. Um, a metric buttload, a metric buttload, yeah. That's a that's a chachi me measurement. No, it's not. That's a legitimate <laughs> measurement. Look it up, Rob. You you you've owned an iPhone four for the past year. Have you uh you you ever wanted to uh, try your movie making shops on it? Um, <laughs> are we talking about like citizen journalism or like legitimate cinematography? Probably a little bit of both. Uh, well, I've made a couple of really dumb videos using my phone. Hmm. There's that one where I discovered the little arrow next to the gas indicator on your dashboard in your car. Uh, I, remember, you, I remember that one. <laughs> it tells you what side of your car your gas flap is I on. I remember that one. It's very well shot, by the way. And, uh, and I actually, I used my iPhone um, yesterday morning to make a video uh, to a, a client had requested uh, a demo video of a project that we're working on here. And so I had left my Canon at home, so I just... I made an amazing tripod involving an eight foot tall ladder and a two by four and so <laughs> and just laid my phone on top of it because I had some displays that I laid out on the floor mm -hmm. uh, and I made a video and it, and it works on an eight foot ladder and a two by four that and a two like, by four that, that is amazing a little bit not quite as portable though no, but no. It, it goes to is it's it's the camera you have is the most important one right yeah I was actually thinking um I think I was um I was riding my bike to work the other day or something, and I was really, I, I mean, I've said it before, it's not like a new phrase, it's not my phrase, but the best camera is always the camera you have with you. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you can tell me you have a 1DS Mark IV all you want, but if it's not in your pocket and I have my iPhone, <laughs> I win. Because that means I'm able to capture the moment in front of me and you're not. That's true. Uh, and when you look at, because I was considering, like, how much, how many photos I've taken of just casual, like, you're walking down the street and you find something interesting and you capture that moment. That's, that is the essence of photography to be able to do that. And the amount of photographs I've been able to produce that are exactly that has increased exponentially ever since the camera on the iPhone got to the point where it was just, it wasn't like you had to wait half a minute for the camera to load and the quality wasn't like so crappy that you couldn't use it. Like it, the camera is good enough to do anything you want. And so this is really, I mean, it's certainly other smartphones have done it too, but uh, pretty sure the stats on Flickr show that the iPhone, the iPhone in general, is the most used camera on the planet. Mm -hmm. To catch jagoffs, might I add? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to mention, hey, with the new iPhone, you're going to be able to catch more jagoffs in the act <laughs> than ever before. Uh quick loader i understand so um you know i put a, i put something out yesterday i was like hey what's going on this week what what what's awesome that we should talk about and uh father spoon douglas at douglas derda on uh on the twitter um who of course is uh and uh, should should i drink that uh dot com go check out what they're doing and i lost my notes here uh he says it's national teacher friend friend to homebrew day uh this coming saturday that has some science in it now when i heard homebrew I thought homebrew as in like 
homebrew games on the Wii. No, um, he means beer. No. But no one has come from him. I looked it up. Oh, oh, it's yeah. it's it's homebrew. And yeah. I guess uh, Sick Puppy's going to be uh, working with him this weekend. So I just want to throw a shout out for that. I mean, it is. T- well, it's awesome because it's making beer. Come on, let's be honest here. Uh, here's actually a site for it. I'm over not a big fan of that process. Mm-hmm. Like from what I understand, a lot of it smells. Yeah. Oh yeah, because like it's all it's boiling all, of the hops thing. It's oh. all about fermenting and everything oh, like screw that. that. Um, homebrewassociation.org is where I found the information. But yeah, Saturday, November fifth is uh, National Teach a Friend to Homebrew Day. So uh, if you are a home brewer and uh, I'll, I'll drink it, but they someone else can make it. <laughs> well, you know, Hutch, you know, again, right. as I view, um, it, the, we've had some of his his sample, some of his. Uh, makings right over there like i said someone else can make it but i'll drink it you're a consumer yeah i'm not a maker i'm a drinker okay (laughs) so i just wanted to give a shout out to that that and those guys over there should i drink that who are just uh they were nominated again for food and drink at the podcast awards uh which i think ended voting last week so i'm sorry i'm a little late on that um yeah you know you weren't nominated therefore (laughs) you don't care well i care for our friends to get it get i'd love to see should i drink that get it it's a victory for Pittsburgh, Chachi. Do you really believe that? Yes, in a small way. Um, <laughs> some other stuff. I was listening to Mac Break Weekly today, um, and there was this uh, a few can't rumors, but they're really kind of uh, uh, considerable rumors uh, that that Apple may be uh, uh, discontinuing the um, the MacBook. Or I'm sorry, the Mac Pro, not the MacBook Pro. We're talking about those big silver towers that nobody Great can tower. afford unless you're in a video house. What's that, Rob? <laughs> I, <laughs> you know that picture I sent you earlier? Yeah. There were um, four of those sitting next to those. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but they are, like, it's just, I mean, the only reason we use them is because we use them to push out. I actually, because I'm in charge of keeping inventory of these things, and I named the last one we brought uh, the Kraken, because it's, <laughs> it's, it's our render machine, so now... <laughs> <laughs> whenever we have to make some like high def video with with a lot of uh, a lot of render work i can i can say unleash the kraken and everybody <laughs> everybody gets a laugh but I, it's true i mean we're they're they're slightly harder to come by and then looking at, at apple stock numbers of the mac pros they're doing something i don't know if they're getting rid of, getting rid of them but something's certainly going to change well i think they're definitely taking a, a bit of a bite out of it because some of the people that don't need quite that much power I said mm-hmm. the the i7 that we're we're running at the at my one job is tremendous and definitely replaces it. But I also, you know, consider we had the uh, Mac Pros at the old video house I used to work at. They probably still have the same ones, and they're from about 2007. And you didn't really notice a difference running uh, Final Cut 7 all those years. Oh, yeah. And, the, uh, I mean, like I told you about the, the new Mac Minis. The new Mac Minis with an i7 mm-hmm. are unbelievably quick at processing video. So much so that our Mac Pro towers from 06, it take like, for example, let's say you need to... Um, take uh, 20 minute long video 1080p from H.264 to WMV. If you do that on a Mac Pro Tower from 2006, just like standard model off the shelf, yeah, um, it'll take about an hour and a half. If you do that on a brand new i7 Mac Mini, it'll take between 10 and 15 minutes. Jeez. Yeah. And that's what we're talking about is like, like pumping out lots of information or coding stuff. Like that. Um, and the only people that need these towers are the ones that need to put like 32 gigabytes of RAM in something, you yeah. know. Um, I mean, well, I'll tell you what I can put 32 gigs of RAM in. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, we actually, well, I put it on Twitter. I was at, I was talking about it. And uh, AJ, AJ uh, responded a bit. <laughs> and, I, and no apologies for spamming. I, I, I should have put you to a Google Plus uh, thread for this. Uh, he says, Apple's choice here is actually a very smart one. Uh, but well, for those who don't know, Mac Pro is the reason they are so very powerful because they're using Intel Xeon processors and server-grade hardware in there. So you're getting a lot of power, like really just un, unapologetic power out of these machines. And that's why we were able to hold on to them for so long at, the, at, at, my, old, at my old job. Um, Apple's choice here is actually a very smart one using Thunderbolt for pro applications eliminates a huge cost, uh, you know, versus the server stuff. The cost of building a Mac Pro is very high due to the use of server chips. Using desktop chips actually saves pros money. The new Sandy Bridge chips have uh, shown server level performance at a desktop price, and Apple can't pass that up. So we may actually just see a decline in 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 the in them swapping over. Yep. 
So uh, maybe maybe what it's going to be is the next generation. It won't be a Mac Pro, but maybe it will be something to replace it that will actually be cheaper. Will actually be like the the maybe it'll be an iMac Pro for all we know. The but, only consideration that a lot of people aren't thinking about in the idea of getting rid of the uh, the Pro Tower is, for instance, the reason that I'm using them with the job that went out with the insane amount of monitors today mm -hmm. um, is because we needed to drive a video wall. So I needed four video outputs from a single source, which and I only, needed you those to be that to be like one gigantic desktop, which you can do using things like matrix cards and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. just the very like the idea of expansion cards. Yeah, because nothing else is really expandable. The only way you expand out an iMac and a, a, a MacBook and I'm a Mac Mini is USB or or Thunder, you know, Thunderbolt if they're rolling that out too in these things. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, just that ability to throw in like a black magic card to do some more rendering. Like if you're doing the video stuff, like the wirecast stuff I'm doing here, I'm doing a, a MacBook pro, which is tremendous, but it could definitely benefit from throwing in like an, another video rendering card to, to help push this. If we did decide to upgrade like a show like this to, to HD or something like that, I don't have too many options. If I go with like even a higher end iMac other than the higher end iMac just has a lot of power to it. Right. I mean, if, you, if you're if you just talking video production, people like Alec Lindsay will be happy to tell you that you get a 27-inch iMac and you are set. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's become the, the case for editing, for just straight editing. Yeah, so. but if you need if you need flexibility in your hardware, you need multiple video inputs, you need the, the ability to expand to handle certain jobs or pull back for whatever reason, then there's nothing else you can do except for have a Mac Pro. Now, now somebody like me, I, I feel like I'm kind of stepping out of part of the game here because I'm finding myself, I just picked up Final Cut X uh, over this past week after after doing the trial for a month. And I, I shifted a lot of this stuff that you're watching here over to that for editing. Actually starting on my first paid project this week, converting that over with Unsung to see how that goes. Um, and, you know, I'm not pushing the volume that I was before and collaborative experience that I was before using Final Cut 7 in a, in a video house. I'm wondering what the considerations are for somebody that's doing, you know, video on a broader scale these days. And, and you know, are, are people going to be abandoning shit more and more for PC because of all these changes? Mm, I don't know. It's, it's, it's like a, a kind of a, a funny conundrum because the people who are doing that sort of video are the same people who are tried and true Apple dedicated people. Mm hmm. So it's basically saying that, like, if the if the pro hardware disappears, then we're, we, you, I, and the professionals get put in this awkward boat where, like, the thing that we cherish so much has chosen to reject us. And yet, and yet, we're doing so. <laughs> and yet, we're doing so great with Final Cut X. And I think just people aren't going to step up to it. You know, it, it is really hard because really, it, when you got it on good hardware, that thing is fast. Like yes. I, I'm seeing processes. I'm starting to like consolidate a lot of my processes into into. Uh, I'm getting really kind of video geeky here. I apologize, but I am really just kind of consolidating a lot of my work into a couple steps that yeah. used to be okay. I got to open Sawn Truck Pro. Okay, got to do this. Okay, I have to do the color correct. I can just do that across the board in this. You know, uh, multiple sequences in one in one line actually work now. Um, you know, just a lot of organization is there that didn't used to be. I kind of had to throw away and chip away from my old understanding of things. And, but, you know, it works. It really works. But, <laughs> but that's enough about that. Uh, let's get yeah. out of the video geekiness. We're losing Chachi. We're losing Chachi. Oh, you, you lost <laughs> it's me. It's kind of like when you talk about video games. Yes, yes. I'm pretty Chachi with some video games. That's, huh? that's I don't know. why we I have didn't. Video game? You, we have a video game uh, story for you. That's here, why Chachi. I didn't complain. <laughs> Because you knew where video games were coming. Well, no, because I I know like how Rob feels when we talk about certain <laughs> how things. How I feel. Yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> what do you think, uh, John? Are you a Mackie or? Uh... That's funny you ask. Is I'm sitting here with a Windows computer that I hate, and my son, who just shipped off to college, is trying to turn me on to the Mac. I've got an iPad, I've got an iPhone, and I've got a Windows computer. I think I'm headed to the Mac <laughs> version. Uh, not too in a few months here. Mm -hmm. My son loves his Mac Pro. Got it for him for for freshman year college. Loves it. My God, he got yeah. a Mac Pro for college. Wait, yeah. or, or a MacBook Pro. MacBook Pro. Okay, sorry, okay. Pro, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say that's a that's a huge tower to lug off to college. I was gonna say yeah, he puts it on his back and it's mobile as long as he walks around. It's with part of his part. workout plan too, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then again, you get those seventeen inches. Those are kind of hefty too. Um, <laughs> 
Exactly. Well, let's bring Chachi. <laughs> let's bring Chachi around here. Uh, GameStop is at it again. No. Yeah. Well, no. Pass. This is. It was a pass. 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 No. But uh, GameStop Android Tablet Pilot Program. Uh, <laughs> three models are going to be offered at 200 locations. Um, I. I did you read this article? I tweeted my response to okay. this article. Okay. Well, explain. It's anyone that has a few bucks is jumping into this whole tablet game thing. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. dilutes the market and just further proves that Apple is going to dominate everyone else. But okay. it does create competition. Barely. Well, at least they try. I mean, I could poop on the floor and call it a tablet and <laughs> I wouldn't consider that real competition. <laughs> No, well, that's but kind of what some of these guys are too. Every yeah. time somebody new approaches the same problem, eventually somebody's going to come up with a new idea that every, changes something. Yeah, and hopefully everybody's learning from something. Even as GameStop just that stepped up and is like, well, we're not trying that again. Um, but you, it, you know what I really hope happens? What's that? I hope this causes GameStop to go broke. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously, I hope they sunk way too much money into this tablet game. And they fail miserably because they're going to fail miserably. Mm -hmm. And they just have to close down shop. Now, um, so according to the report in PC Magazine, GameStop is starting the pilot program where they will be selling not one, but three Android tablets in 200 locations. The lineup includes the Acer A100 at 329, Asus Transformer at 399, and Samsung Galaxy Tab at 499. Naturally, they'll be preloaded with the GameStop software. They'll be promoting tablet-optimized games to play on them. Um, it doesn't sound like GameStop is going to be pushing touch-based games. What? As all the low-end tablet games come packaged with a Bluetooth controller. So basically, they're making this as a replacement for, say, a, ga- a Nintendo DS. Yeah, but it's huge. But, I mean, is it? I, I don't understand what games they're exactly getting on this. I mean, are they are they porting over Madden to this or something? You know, what, how, what publishers are behind it? Is it a whole other platform? Or are they just uh, uh, sweeping up certain Android games that are already out in the market? This is a bad idea. <laughs> I'm just a bad idea. I have no idea what they're planning. Um, Sonic in the chat room has it right. It's too high a prices for a place like GameStop to be charging. You think? I, I, those are pretty competitive not, as far as uh, tablets go, I thought, right? I mean, is, is they any really different? This is game. Stop. Yeah, and you'll be this able. This isn't to, Radio Shack, and you're going to be able to trade tablet back in for twenty bucks. Radio you know, Shack right? doesn't exist anymore. It is now the Shack. Remember? Oh, I'm sorry. The Shack. What did that? No. What did that happen? Because none of the none of the things change. Mm-hmm. Everything I pass is Radio. You Shack. know that that point in time where Radio Shack stopped being helpful. Yeah, yeah. that's when it changed to the Shack. 1996. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Like, it, like no. nowadays, you can't walk into a Radio Shack, and we've had this discussion on here before. It's always very awkward when you're walking into a sh- Radio yeah. Shack. But Can you help me? No, I just need a cord. Thank you. Actually, I'm not going to in anymore. Yeah, money on price is cheaper. And all right, price exactly. Yeah, so. But, I mean, all right, first, they screw up by even offering tablets, mm-hmm. okay? Because they're not Walmart. W- wait, why, why do you say that? They're trying to be a multifaceted electronics Well, they're trying area. to be a multifaceted gaming. They're trying to tackle every side. It is your GameStop. It is your one-stop gaming place. Which, for them, should have ended when they entered the online gaming arena. Okay. When they started doing e-buys for games, that's where they should have stopped trying. Which was only an answer to what's happening when I get all my stuff from Xbox Live now. Right. And Steam. Yes. That's where it should have stopped. Mm-hmm. They're not a mobile gaming company. Mm-hmm. They sell mobile games, but they they shouldn't include. Plus, also, if they're including a Bluetooth controller with it, mm-hmm. that defeats the purpose of it being a tablet. They <laughs> might as well just s- sell me a PSP and be done with it. At which they'll be selling those too, I'm sure. Right. Um, well, you know, what's the difference between this and looking at like Barnes and Noble, a br- another brick and mortar that went into an online strategy, and now they have the Nook versus, well, I guess they're kind of developing their own Nook, which they're announcing a new one on Monday and doing pretty decent with it. The Nook is kind of a nice device. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. But uh, GameStop doesn't belong in this arena. Now, this is their first This is their first shot at it, and what they probably had a couple versions of the Nook before the one I saw. 
that I was kind of impressed with. So, I mean, this is this is their first stab at it using somebody else's hardware. They're going to have their own first draft of their software on there, which I'm sure it'll be horrible at first. But you never know. This could develop into something. This could develop into the uh, Amazon Kindle fire of, uh, of, of game devices, maybe. No, it's not. No? GameStop, if you're listening to me. I hope you crash and burn. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope you hit the ground so hard that there's a mushroom cloud that we can see from anywhere. And now I'm done uh, uh, playing devil's advocate here. Yeah, God, my, me too. I hate them so bad. Um, anyways, moving on. Um, so, my head hurts so, so remember when Netflix raised their prices a little bit ago and got all that crazy hate stuff and everybody went nuts for a while there? And then and then Netflix seemed to lose their minds for a while, too. Uh, Redbox is going to increase DVD rental prices to $1.20 per day. Oh, God. Oh, no. Look I'm canceling out. my account. Look out. Wait. The second worst thing that happened to white people. <laughs> What, that video was awesome. Jason it was. Alexander. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen that, right, Rob? Yes. I've yes. Seen. Yes. So have you seen that, John? No, I have not. Oh, it's tremendous. Uh, look up, look up. I think it was Funny or Die, Jason Alexander, the Netflix uh, Netflix price increase uh, out there. I think we played it here before yeah, on the breaks uh, before. Jason Alexander, Netflix. Just Google that. It'll mm-hmm. come up. Mm-hmm. Okay. But, um. <laughs> Yeah, who cares? Yeah, and aside from this, I also heard in the last week um, about how uh, Blockbuster is now subject to the 28-day wait uh, with uh, Warner Brothers. So, what, they survived bankruptcy, came back with a vengeance with the new deals with DirecTV, and now they're a threat enough that they're uh, they're going to be uh, delayed, just like Redbox, just like Netflix. <coughs> so, uh, so, no more of those annoying ads. Yay. <laughs> so... Um, I don't know what you guys think. I mean, does, who uses Redbox? Does anybody here use Redbox? I mean, nope. I'm, we're all yeah. Netflix guys. You yeah. Use Redbox there. Yeah, we use Redbox probably three times a week here. Mm-hmm. And, uh, why do you Why do you pick that over something like, uh, say, Netflix? <clears throat> My wife's the boss, and she's always. She's always <laughs> <in> the <world>. <laughs> <laughs> There's a perspective we don't get. <laughs> you know what? No, it's. I mean, we have HD where, or we have the on-demand Comcast stuff. Just doesn't seem like it's it's reasonable stuff on there. Plus, it's four ninety nine. You go to Redbox and it's a buck ninety nine. I mean, and it just seems. I don't know. It just seems a whole. It's the way we've been, I guess, because creatures of habit right now. <laughs> yeah, and in those Redboxes, I usually like. You'll go to Walmart on, on busy nights, and there's a line in front yeah. of red boxes it's yeah. crazy like there's yeah. probably as many people that i saw like in front of red boxes back in the day on a friday night when i went to the video store yeah and the tough part is you have people standing there like they're picking their lottery numbers you know they're <laughs> they're waiting forever trying to sort through all the movies and all that kind of stuff and you're freezing cold outside so it's kind of weird but here we are we sit there and wait for them anyways so it's like the very kiosk uh, culture we live in now so how do you yeah. feel about the 20 percent increase then you know what? I don't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like what's it gonna? It's not gonna break the bank. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. Um, but it's still it's still a little bit of a creep. And uh, you know, but hey, you know, they had the dollar thing that that kind of got their name out there, and you're gonna start seeing the difference. It's the yeah. same thing for anyone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, every company is gonna do it. I mean, look at um, like Netflix. It, it was such it was such a large increase for what they were giving you. But how long had it been that they were what seven ninety nine nine ninety nine? I mean, they actually lowered prices for a while, didn't they? Yeah, they went down a buck. Yeah, for, yeah. I had it for a month. I canceled it because I didn't use it, and mm-hmm. then I realized how much I actually did use it, <laughs> and started it up. And yeah, it, it was a. It was eight ninety nine when I first started an account. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that month, I dropped it. A few months later, it went down to seven ninety nine. I started back up, and now I don't even know what the price is. I think it's still seventy nine. Yeah, probably because you, you were always just streaming. Yeah, I'm always I'm just streaming. So you didn't see any difference. No, <laughs> no it didn't matter to me. Mm-hmm. And Rob, you still hate it, right? Um, <laughs> what Netflix? Yeah. Well. I mean, I've been watching a lot of 30 Rock. <laughs> yeah, you still hate it. Um, I think on. because the only thing I can find to watch is 30 Rock. I mean, 30 Rock is great. Don't get me wrong. But, like, I oh, I hate it so much. <laughs> well, HBO you, Go, on the other hand, that's a cool thing. Really? You're getting into that? I'm not paying for it, but I oh, might be getting into it. Oh, yeah, neither am I. Um, <laughs> that's funny. You know something I did pay for that's not around anymore? Remember Zadiva? Zadiva. Zadiva, Zadiva, Zadiva. 
Uh, the thing where there, where uh, we surmise that there's somebody somewhere with a little DVD <laughs> robot putting it in, and so I can hit play. Already, Chachi's losing it over that one. No, um, I'm laughing because Rob sent me a DM. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jeez. It um, goes kind of along the line of what I sent out via text message the other day that you responded WTF to. I'll talk. I'll okay, talk. this is not a no. Uh, yeah, no. Okay. No, it's uh, not, but anyways, but, uh, Steve, like you should check your DM. Uh oh. Okay. But, um, um, Sonic says. Mm -hmm. in the chat, that he lives in the sticks, and the Walmart there has two identical red boxes that yeah. keep lines. Yeah. And there's still lines? Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, I've seen the doubled up red box, especially at Walmart. Uh, thankfully, the one in Coons, the grocery store, is inside by the pharmacy. So, Ooh, fancy. Yeah. Uh, no cold weather waiting for you. Nope, nope. You just block my ass with a cart when I'm trying to get myself some bread. Oh. Anyways, uh, <laughs> but Sadiva, so you know, they were, they were, uh, the questionably, we actually heard about them because they were under investigation because uh, apparently you can't stream DVD movies over online legally. Uh, but I tested it out. I watched a couple movies on it. I thought it was pretty cool. I didn't get to use all of my three credits, and uh, now I never will because they now were ordered. Now the monkey controlling the DVD players doesn't yeah. have a job. No, it doesn't. <laughs> They're ordered to permanently shut down operations and pay $1.8 million to the MPAA. Do they oh. even make one point million dollars? That's off probably of that? exactly how much they made. That's right. My three dollars are in there somewhere, yeah. and they're going to go to the MPA. Congratulations! Uh, I, this you is, just paid them. There you go. There you go. Thank, you're welcome, Tom Cruise. Um, no, he doesn't get that. No, I don't even know who the MPA. Oh, whatever. Um, the major. Let's the, see. The, the result movie, sends a strong the motion message. Picture Association. <laughs> The uh, MP, well, the MPAA Associate General Counsel Dan Robbins seemed understandably delighted. This result sends a strong message to those who would exploit exploit the studio's works in violation of copyright law on the internet. That or guy just elsewhere. sounds like an a hole. <laughs> like just from his name alone. You sure, it's not my reading. No, his title and name <laughs> make him seem like a giant a hole. Okay. Okay. <laughs> See what I'm doing there? I see what you're doing there. Didn't swear. I, I appreciate that. I really do. <laughs> that saves me a lot of time. I know. Um, and they can still show it on TV. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Chachi. No problem. Thank you, Chachi. Chachi, do you want to go for a walk in a park? Do I have to leave the couch? Not anymore. Yes! Thank you, Street View. Woo! <laughs> you're doing Street View walks <laughs> through <laughs> parks so you don't have to, says Engadget. Thank you, um, Google Street View. So I wonder, hey, can I go? Like, don't they already have bike paths, actually? Yeah. Yes. I was going to yes, say, I can go check out the bike pass, pass of Pittsburgh or something. Yeah. But now I can go check out Point Park. <laughs> Or I can take a walk through Central Park. So uh, there you Ooh, go. Yeah. Um, Thank you, so, I Google. Mean, are they? Uh, do they just have like little little go karts with uh, <laughs> with the bubble on top of them? Probably. I don't know. I don't know. Or well, play. they might. I know for the um, for the ones that they use on the bike paths and a lot of like walking trails and that sort of thing, they have basically just a tricycle. Okay. Uh, it's it's a, a cargo bike with two wheels in the back that holds all their gear and stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if they were using a uh, something that was backpack mounted at this point, but that would be. I mean, they're basically. They're already asking their employees to pedal a bike down down paths, so it wouldn't I wouldn't put it past them yeah, to like make this awesome gyroscopic camera backpack and then just have their people walk through parks. Is this their employees at this point, or is this just like an intern job? They they hire out another company to do okay. it. Okay. Sure. Okay. But uh, yeah, there's a little bit uh, of it. This is a uh, some park in the middle of some buildings, and uh, I don't know. That, that's interesting. I well, uh, according to Sonic, the uh, depiction of Wally -E is almost here. Oh, yeah. Where we're too fat and lazy and we ride around in these hover oh, chairs. Oh, so we can virtually visit the parks yeah. and don't have to leave and, and virtual I can sit exercise. here and podcast. I'm sorry, every time I go to this, it's the video of these guys' faces and not the street views I'm trying to show you. Blue <laughs> is the new red. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I don't know. It's uh, uh, Google will... Uh, wasn't there a thing where Google couldn't street view the... In isn't there a, a street view for businesses, like the inside of businesses they were trying to push for a while there? I don't know. Um, but but then that like law, law illegal. Well, I th I'm sure there's permission. Like the Walmart will let me street view its aisle, so I know where my toothpaste is. No, they won't. I I, mean, I think hypothetically, I think that's how it's supposed to work. That seems iffy. <laughs> what about you, John? You're going to use street view for parks? 
<laughs> yeah, I think we could do live Jagoff feeds right there, just <laughs> roaming all the parks and streets looking for Jagoff. You ever use Street View <laughs> looking for Jagoffs? Because you, I mean, you almost can already, right? Yeah, I mean, and you probably couldn't go far without finding one. <laughs> 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 Tremendous new uses for We street. could take it to Cleveland and really have a good time. Oh, <laughs> oh Cleveland jokes. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. On this show, we stick to Nebraska jokes. Oh, okay. Gotcha. They don't even have Street View in Nebraska. Come right. on. They don't have streets oh. in Nebraska. They don't, no, they don't streets. have streets. You don't have Street View dirt roads. No, you cannot yeah. do a Street View of a cornfield. I'm sorry. The roads aren't big enough. Oh, hey, that. That one family needed it because they got stuck in the corn field and they had to call 911 to get out. What was this? It's so hateful. Oh, in Nebraska, they don't even have 911. It's all smoke signals. <laughs> so hateful. <laughs> you started this. I will be so proud if we get hate mail. From this. <laughs> no. I thought that was no. the goal. Uh, this, this is like my baby. I'm happy to see it grow. <laughs> Uh, You're people. not on the way to Nebraska in that <laughs> container, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope not. Let's people hope not. who aren't on the show make fun of Nebraska. That's true. That's true. We did find a random stuff that one Nebraska. Yeah, someone Can named, anybody actually name five cities in Nebraska? No. Nope. Uh, we, <laughs> we know how many game stops there are. But do they have five cities in Nebraska? I don't think so. <laughs> I can name two cities in Nebraska. Well, Lincoln and Omaha. Uh, Omaha. And Omaha. Omaha. Yeah. yeah, those are the only two cities I can name oh, in Nebraska. Omaha, the stakes. Well, yeah, Omaha oh, stakes. Oh, yeah. out of yeah. Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah. Where do you where do you think the corn goes? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> it's corn fed beef. Oh, <laughs> All right, I'm pretty, okay, okay. Oh. Wow. Uh, someone I know mm. calls it calls uh, someone of in a an authority position above them Nebraska. Mm. Really? Yes, because Wait, as a as a slight to them. Yes, because <laughs> F Nebraska. Oh, yes. <laughs> that's that's great. That's great. Um, let's see. I have one more story here, Chachi. I know you. Who put this in here? Well, okay. Oh, Chachi, was this you? That put no, this? no, no. You were talking about. <laughs> I it. didn't edit the notes. Okay. I didn't even read the notes pre-show. But Justin Bieber's oh, streaming bill author should be locked up. Uh, well, Rob, okay, what's okay. going on? Uh, see, I read the story, or I read the title of the story, and I misread it, and I was getting ready to jump on the, let's beat the kid with a bat train. And that would be the wrong train to Right, get on. right, right, <laughs> because I read the, the article in the title, and you know what, I can't believe this is going to come out of my mouth, but I agree with a little. <laughs> <laughs> you, come on, you agree with Justin Bieber, it's yeah. okay. Uh, so what this is, is a, uh, a bill is currently working its way through Congress that would make it illegal. Um, let me make sure I get my quote unquote right here. <laughs> Where is it? Uh, I would make it illegal, uh, make it a felony to show 10 or more, or more public performances by electronic means in any 180 day period. Right. So the reason that uh, Justin Bieber has gotten into this is because somebody who is against this bill uh, put up freebieber.org because uh, Bieber is one of many artists who we're very familiar with who was discovered by making cover song videos on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And this, this bill, if passed, would make it so that the young Justin Bieber, who was discovered on YouTube, would be a felon and would be put in jail for five years. And you know why I'm against this, guys? You know why I'm against? Because videos like this will never see the light of day and put us in jail, inc including our, our good friend, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> and just, uh, just like that. That's right. That's you right. Make Chachi would be a felon. Yeah. But this, uh, aside from people making cover videos, this includes... <laughs> Uh, any, say, like any video game uh, screencast you've ever seen with music in the background. This includes uh, 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 Machinima. Uh, this includes anything where any copyrighted work is used in any video ever. Mm -hmm. and, and we talked about this a few weeks ago, I think, when you were off, uh, mm. about like yeah, the other video gaming, the, the was it, play, the play views yeah. or something like that. And, and actually, in the, even looking at, we're looking at streaming some gaming here. Um, 
tomorrow night is a little bit of a test. And uh, we would be felons. Going to jail. Going to jail. Starting it right now. We're just going to make Can I get my tattoo tier now? <laughs> Are you talking about because oh. of this picture in this article here? <laughs> no, I'm, talk I'm talking about because we go to jail. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that what that means? I think that's what that means. I thought that means somebody died. Uh, that's what that means. Or maybe somebody died in jail or something like it, that. It means, uh, it means a lot of things. It means a lot of things? <laughs> yeah, I was, was going to explain what it means, and I realized that was a bad idea, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> uh, but uh, this is, uh, let's see, this is... Zo -do 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 -do. Sonic brings up a good point, and this is going to... And a discussion before it even starts, because this isn't the place to have the discussion. But <laughs> this is what the country is working on instead of fixing, I don't know, anything else. <laughs> anything else. <laughs> yeah, why? Are, I mean, I mean he, he, wait, wait who is, who's putting this out here? Is it a, a This is by uh, uh, Klobuchar. Uh, he's a Democrat Senator. from Minnesota. Okay, Senator Amy uh, uh, sure uh, from, from Minnesota. Nebraska? So I'm in, if I was in Minnesota saying, really? This is what you're working on instead of giving, you know, making sure we have jobs. Or maybe Minnesota doesn't have problems like the rest of us. I don't know. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I would no, hold on. Russell fan. Knock that down. It, it, the thing doesn't say that it wouldn't do this stuff to kids. It, the bill is so loosely written that it would convict these people. Well, we said right. it's, it's targeting. Uh, is, we, we were talking about this before the show. It's actually targeting so you're not broadcasting what sports and movies and stuff, but it's mm -hmm. written so bad that it would make just about half the things that we do illegal. Yeah. So yeah. And anything I like, talk about on Chachi says. It's just like that one time. <laughs> it's just like that one time when they had the law where I think it was in a state or it was in Germany. Somehow I confused the two where they wrote it so loosely. It outlawed all video games and electronic gaming when it was trying to target online gambling. Yeah. That's just a really badly written law. The people's writing this don't understand the stuff they're writing about. You need a technical writer for this stuff that gets it. <laughs> I'll do it. You can you, pay me volunteering. All right. The well, awesome F cast. You pay me. The, uh, the <laughs> awesome cast. Uh, why is the F up coalition is starting. If you would like us to write your bill so it isn't completely retarded, uh, please email us at contact at awesomecast.com. Um, this goes and to we'll help you out. Yeah. This goes to Congress, Senate, uh, city council. Your uh, mom. Yeah, your mom. mom. If you need someone, a technical minded person, to write the bills you want to pass, call us. We'll write it so that you don't sound stupid. <laughs> John, you got any thoughts on this? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'll do the pitch for you. We'll write it so you don't sound like a jag off. <laughs> there you go. There you go. We got it all figured out here. <laughs> all figured out. So um, I don't have much else to other than the uh, Google Transport transparency report came out this week <laughs> thank you for writing that in there rob uh <laughs> uh google google yeah have to, has to do a transparency report and i guess they did their first draft of it this week so uh you know how much do they know about us so are we, are we scared of google i mean we're all using google services here between us right I'm absolutely not, i mean i'm not scared of google because i'm not doing anything that would require me to be scared of google Okay, so you're 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 with Eric Schmidt on that comment. Yeah, I, okay. The only people that have to worry about being afraid of someone else is if they're doing something wrong. Yeah, uh, there are. <clears throat> Whoa. Yeah, sorry. Hmm. Uh, there are counter arguments to, uh, to to that because that has been my argument for a while. And I've I've had like the basically like I'm not doing anything wrong, so I don't care what you know. And there are arguments against that, but it's <laughs> um. It's just kind of the changing of the time sort of thing, I feel. It's getting uh -huh. used to this new idea. It's changing. I think what needs to happen is we need to change our definition of privacy. Right. And this isn't, this isn't coming at, like, Google knowing things about me does not come at a loss of rights for me, as far as I see it. Because I'm getting a benefit out of them knowing things about me. It means that my experience online is catered to my needs and my expectations. Just like, I go on Amazon... And Amazon knows what products to recommend for me. This exactly. is a benefit to me, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, I think if, a lot of the people who are afraid of Google, quote unquote, afraid of Google, besides not having anything to hide, the people who don't have anything to hide and are still afraid of Google, they're just very, they're cemented into this idea that privacy is <laughs> being able to keep all of this stuff in a nice, closely knit box. But Big this brother. is. 
these these are the the decades of information sharing that we're going into, and for this these this this atmosphere to grow, more information has to be shared. Mm -hmm. So, Rob, you think it's more of a paranoia thing more than anything, right? People that yeah. don't use their giant eagle card because they don't want them to know anything about them. Same people aren't going to are going to be afraid of Google. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, that's that's a perfect way to put it. I mean, when you go to the supermarket, you swipe your little card. All they learn about you is a pattern. They learn what you, John Smith, like to buy on a Wednesday at this time, as with everybody else in the supermarket, so they can try and sculpt the supermarket experience, sometimes to take advantage of, but all to make a buck. Uh, but ultimately, you as a consumer do see a benefit from this thing. And it doesn't hurt you in any way. Exactly. If, you know, if, if they're going to make all of my experiences better... Good. I mean, I mean, we, we, I mean, we already. What do I have to lose? Yeah, I mean, it, it's all a matter of uh, they're they're using this to to advertise back to us, which we're used to sitting there in front of the idiot box and uh, uh, absorbing those. So, what's the difference between that and, and ads on my Gmail that might actually have something to do with the email I'm writing? Yeah. You know, it also has a lot to do with just a misunderstanding of the way the technology works and not realizing that what Google is doing today is no different from what your cable company was doing at the beginning of the idea of having local cable where they know that like for instance you are in you you get cable in Pittsburgh you buy cable in Pittsburgh you're going to get ads for Giant Eagle why because you can't get Giant Eagle outside of Pittsburgh mm -hmm. they're doing that because they know where you live that doesn't harm you <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's the like exact Pandora. same thing Google is I learning had, things like Pandora where you live and you're too. getting ads for local things Pandora does that too actually I was commenting about how Veri the other day about how uh, Verizon has uh, some yeah, in call Wall centers in yeah yeah they're, they're, like, they're like oh uh, Verizon's hiring up in Cranberry Township it's like how do you know I'm here <laughs> what, what in the world but I mean I had an app on my phone mm -hmm. that allowed me to do background checks on people yeah yeah is that the uh, the the, uh, the Sonic has an it? also a, an excellent point in the chat room. Off the grid is an outdated concept. Okay. Yeah. You can't go off the grid anymore. Unless you're off. Or, uh, well, my or, <laughs> my favorite example is people who refuse to buy things online. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, here's a pro, here's a pro tip, kids. Uh, you you call up the company to make that order. They're typing it into a computer, and your credit card information is now in the hands of a second individual and going through the internet. Okay, wait, no, you're going to fill out a form. Okay, great. Let's write your information down <laughs> on a piece of paper, pass it through hundreds of hands and machines before it gets to the company. Oh, yeah, that's that's better. Okay, oh, fine. Let's take everybody out of it. Let's go to the store and you swipe your card. You know what that point-of-sale terminal is connected to? The internet. Sorry. I just ruined your life, didn't I? You know, <laughs> I didn't a lot, send of, my company, so a lot of companies now yeah. won't even give you a paper check. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's direct it deposit. It is required by most companies to have direct deposit because that saves them money. Mm -hmm. yeah. They won't pay the extra cost to print you a check. My company doesn't print checks, and they don't give us pay stubs anymore. Mm-hmm. Really? Like, yeah. No, they did away with. Well, yeah, yours is a bigger company. They did so away I can with paper that, yeah. with paper pay stubs. Yeah, it's yeah. all online. No, it just kind of tossed aside, anyways. And you right. can always get all that stuff if you need it, you know. So, because they have it electronically, so why not? You know, why why do I need to get a paper statement from my bank every month when I can just go online and get them all printed out? Right. So, unless you don't trust your bank, then maybe you should get a different bank, anyways. <laughs> you know what? Just do us all a favor and keep your cash under your mattress. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> That's it. it worked last time. Why wouldn't it work this time? <laughs> Until someone finds your address and learns that you have mountains of cash under your mattress because you can't hide. Well, we can't tell where Rob is because he's in a shipping container on his way to Abu Dhabi or Nebraska. No, he's well, not. The door on the <laughs> shipping container is open. k Kayfabe, <laughs> Chachi. I can see another doorway behind that's, him. That's an oh, optical yeah. illusion. <laughs> that's, that's the window. That is. That's what that is. <laughs> All right, I'm not it's a window seat. <laughs> but I mean, uh, no. Yeah, go ahead. I'm done. I'm just. You're sure? Yeah, You're sure? I'm finished. Sorry. All right. Well, on that note, we need to wrap up here. John, thank you so much for joining us. It was a blast. Well, thank you. I appreciate you guys mentioning it. And uh, again, uh, uh, it was great. You guys do a good job. All right. You jagoff.com. Go buy a shirt. Support a great cause over there. Chachi. What up? 
Chachi says dot net. Yeah. Learn what a lemming is. A lemming. Lemmings. Yeah. It's a little um, Alaskan mammal. <laughs> it's fuzzy. It's kind of about the size of a, 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 a guinea pig, I would say. Really? It's guinea pig size? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> but anyhow, yeah. Um, the, uh, the games are still coming. I'm constantly playing them. Oh, Joust and, today. Yeah, it was Joust today. Joust today. Um, and uh, there's a lemming right there. Yep. Now you know. There he is. Oops, there, there he is, that little guy. Yeah. Why yellow? I didn't... Uh, of course, you got ChachiSays.net. Yep. Chachi says the big cast going on over there. Yep. And... Uh, this week, past Friday, we announced the three major details of Chachi Plays 2012. Um, if you're un unfamiliar, Chachi Plays is the 24-hour gaming marathon that I do to raise money for a uh, a child-based charity. I know I'm wearing the shirt. I just <laughs> That's why I remembered to talk about it. Okay, good. But, um, was that your reminder? Is that the string on yes, your finger was the wearing was. shirt? But um, yeah, I, I was afraid that I was going to not mention so this. We do have to update the graphic on that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, I sit down on, it's going to be, February 10th and 11th, 2012, I'll sit down at 7 p.m. I'll get up at, well, I'll get up every, once an hour or so. Um, but I, I play through through 7 p.m. Saturday. Um, so February 10th and 11th, 2012, at the Toonsium on Lib Liberty Avenue. Mark your calendar now. There's no excuse. Yes. <laughs> and, and we'll be online and everything. So if you're uh, out of town and, and whatnot, we'll be we'll be streaming live and doing... We're going to try to do a little bit more than we did last year. With yeah. It. That was kind um, of a it'll be, with a lot of things. It'll be streaming live. Mm -hmm. And we're going to try online gaming. Mm -hmm. um, but the charities. Charities, too. Um, we're going to try to uh, split the money and raise more money mm -hmm. and give... Uh, one third of it to the Toonsium to start a art program for at risk children in mm -hmm. in the city, and the other two thirds are going to go to the Father Ryan's Art Center, which is already established and does um, art projects in McKee's Rocks. Yeah, we saw some uh, content from them over on the Unsung program that we uh, we do right every other week over on Facebook. And it's all video, different so. types of arts. Good and. Good. You go. Support the kids. Yeah, it, it's a good kids. cause. Without the arts, um, education in general would just be down. All right, and because I keep accidentally switching to them, Rob. Hi. Hey, Rob hey. Daily Creda. Rob yeah. JDLC.com. Yeah. Follow his Twitter. It's funny. It, it is funny. I'm funny on the internet. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know but not know. in person at all. No. Not no, at all. No, um, no. What do I have going on? Uh, hey, the, uh, the Teeny Harris exhibit at the Carnegie Museum of Art, which I helped put together. Uh, launch last weekend. It's kind of a big deal. So uh, if you're in Pittsburgh, uh, you are now obligated to go look at it. Yes, I, I am. Oh, yes, yeah? I am. Well, I'll see. I'll see your your art story and tell you that the John Ross art exhibit is over at the uh, Andy Warhol Museum. Ooh. All right. You mean wait, John? It's not John. Yeah. No. Uh, I, Alex Ross. Alex Ross. Alex Ross. I don't know how I oh, mix wow. those up. Okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Alex. <laughs> Alex <laughs> Ross. Um, comic creator. Yes. Art exhibit at the uh, Andy Warhol Kingdom Museum. Kingdom Come and yeah. Marvels, uh, amongst other things. Yes. So, excellent. And of course, uh, <laughs> hey, I'm over at Sorgatron.com. I got some blogging vlog going on no, over there. I, I, I'm kind you of don't do anything. trying to do the November no blow blow mo thing. You know, no, you know, Paul, a, you know, Paul, you know Paul, 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 yeah, yeah, I don't Paul. know which one's that. Um, <laughs> there's the uh, there's now a, a podcasting one too. Really? Yeah, apparently I've done a couple years that now. Dumb. That's I mean uh, the podcast a day. That sounds dumb. It's uh, that's, I've that's almost I, I I really don't have to do much more than I Listen, already do to contribute. There's already uh, I mean, na blah blah mo. <laughs> and there's a book one. Yeah, uh, na ra ma ho. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but still, there's, there's there, too there, many there interesting challenges. Go check them out. There's Just look up National Blogging many. or National Podcasting Month or National Ugh. Writing Month. We know we know people that contributed a lot of those. So uh, if you're interested in that and those projects, go go check them out. It's the first day, I so if you're listening to this those. recorded, you're already too late. I used to try those. I, I'm kind and of. And then I don't blog on the weekends. Like, maybe I should try it, and then well, you you could do it because you have enough games to go up. Yeah, no, I'm not doing it. Anyways, you can find us. We're here every Tuesday live.sorgatronmedia.com uh, to join us in the live chat as these fine people have. Um, you can hit us up at awesomecast.com, contact at awesome, 
724-25 ACAST if you want to give us a call. Uh, we're on your iTunes, your Rokus, your Blip TVs, your YouTubes, your Stitchers, and your Mevios. Uh, if you want to go check us out. And hey, check out yajagoff.com. Thanks, John, for joining us for Chachi and Rob. This is Sorg. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. He's seriously just walking through his building. Hey, you want to do a show? Yeah, really you you want to do a show now? Yeah. <laughs> You're just gonna keep moving. Uh, we'll just... Go in the shipping container. Let me just uh, <laughs> do my power thing. <laughs> and I'll grab a chair too because I'm nice. chair. Nice. Let's see if I can get a decent headphones off. Be right back. <laughs> what the hell? I'm expecting James Bond to come busting in at any moment.